Hey guys and welcome back to another Religion 4 tutorial. Today is going to be another quick one showing you how to create randomly spawning items. So we'll have items in which a random item will spawn in that. So we'll place something down and then whenever the player plays the game, so each time it will be a different item as it's going to randomly choose one from the items we choose for it to be. So let me show you what this is going to look like now. So if we get in, we can see that where we have these three circles here, that's where the axe is going to spawn. You can see this time around we've got a campfire and two TVs and you can see as well that these actually do work as well. So the axes here do work. So we have the fireplace. If I go up to it, we're getting this and then these TVs are also playing the videos that we have on here as well. So each actor works in its own way, the way that the blueprint should if you just place it down itself. So again, if I was spawning again, this time we get two TVs and nothing. If I go in again, you can see we get a TV, campfire and nothing. Now we're getting TV quite a lot that's just because I've only got four different items it can be so obviously there's a very high chance that each one will be picked so try again TV nothing campfire you get the idea this is what we're going to be getting so obviously the more items you add the less likely you are to get looping ones like so so let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it so what we want to do first is we want to create a new actor so I'm going to right click go to blueprint class I'm going to create an actor I'm going to name this one random item bp and this is just going to be the master class master item which will spawn the other items which we want we'll open that up straight away in here we're going to add a component we're going to add a child actor like so and this is what is going to be our other blueprint which we want to set so we're going to go to the event graph delete begin overlap and event tick and we're going to come off of event begin play we're going to drag and drop a reference to the child actor there out of this we're going to set child actor class and the reason we're doing it off of event begin play it's because then that means that every time the player plays the game or every time this is spawned this blueprint spawned then it's going to be a different item if we do it off a construction script it will only do it when we update it which isn't when the player plays the game so event begin play is how we want to do it for the in class we're going to come up with that and we're going to get a select node like so and this is where we put the different options that we want so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click on option zero promote a variable i'm going to name this one tv as that is what this blueprint is going to be is it's going to be my tv blueprint which i've created and i'm going to select that hit compile i'm going to change its default value to be my tv bp which i have here on option one i'll right click promote to variable and do the exact same thing so this one i want to be fire pit like so so i'll name it fire pit drag it down here compile and change its default value to be my fire pit bp like so i'm going to hit the add pin here so i can add another one right click promote to variable name this one draws as again that's what I want this to be compile change its default value so this is our draws BP here and so what we're doing with this is this variable here is basically just this blueprint and it's going to be setting it as the child actor so this which is going to spawn in that blueprint inside of this blueprint which is obviously how we want to do this I'm going to add another pin and this one I'll just leave as blank so that means it's nothing so there is a chance that it'll either be a TV a fire pit draws or nothing and so obviously because I've only got four different options here then that means that we've got a 25% chance of each one spawning so that's still quite a high chance which is why we had quite a few overlaps earlier when I was showing you it so obviously the more options you add the less likely they are to appear which is great that's good that's what you want for randomly generated stuff procedural stuff like this so now how do we actually pick a random one well that's the index here this index basically selects one of these values here so I'm going to come out the index and I'm going to get a random integer in range with the minimum as 0, maximum as 3. As we have options 0, 1, 2 and 3, it's going to pick a random number there. So now if we compile, that works perfectly like so. So what it's going to do is it's going to pick a random number between 0 and 3. Whichever number that is, it will pick that option. So if the number is 2, it's going to pick option 2 so it will spawn in the drawers. So like I say, this is the code done. So I'm just going to select hit C to comment it. I'm just going to name this spawn random actor. What I'm going to do after this is also give it a random rotation. Now this isn't necessary for you, you might want it to always face the same direction, but I wanted to give it a random direction as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off of the set child actor class and I'm going to set actor rotation like so. I'll right click new rotation and split the structure pin as I only want to change the Z value so it's rotated on the Z which is obviously what we want. So then I'll come out of new rotation Z. I'm going to get a random float in range and this is going to be between 0 and 360 so it can spin all the way around in a 360 circle like so again I'll just comment this random rotation like so 
And again, the reason we're doing Z is because if we go into the viewport, we'll rotate it on the Z like that. So obviously you can't see it changing, but you can see on the axes which one that's rotating like so. So like I say, this is the code done. It's very quick and very simple. So now if we minimize and hit play to test this, and also drag these in, sorry, you can see this working. So let's just get quite a few in here. So I've got seven there. So I hit play. We can see we have two fire bits, two drawers, another fire bit, and two TVs, like so. We get in again, and these are now going to be different. So we've got a lot of non there. Go in again, we've got quite a few again. So it's all random. Again, because I've got a 25% chance, we get a lot of overlapping. But the more options you add, the less likely you are to get overlaps, like so. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. We've done everything we've wanted to do. We've set it up so we can have randomly spawning items in here. Again, the more items you add, the less likely you are to have overlaps. So you get something which looks like this, and it's just completely random each time. And also the player's not likely to have them all around them like this, so you wouldn't really notice either. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.